Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to talk about the American Physical Society since its annual spring meeting is being held here in Columbus this year. The APS is a unique scientific community because it ensures that its members have the opportunity to present their work at their national and local meetings. If you are a member of the APS, you will be heard. The APS organizing committee for the meeting might not agree with the content of your work, but they will encourage everyone to speak. The American Physical Society hosts two key national meetings, namely the March and April meetings. In addition, it hosts the following local or section meetings throughout the country. Most scientists do not actively participate in their local chapter meetings. But for my part, I have always believed that these meetings were equally important as the talks and posters presented at section meetings also enter the scientific record. That is why I have attended many section APS meetings around the country and I hope someday to attend every local chapter meeting of the APS at least once. Now many people are concerned about the state of modern science and how difficult it could be to advance a new idea. Scientific organizations often make the submission of abstracts and papers challenging or impossible. But if a member of the APS submits an abstract, it will be included in the bulletin of the American Physical Society. Some might say, but this is only an abstract. If so, they do not understand how science actually works. Abstracts can in fact represent self-contained ideas which do not need further elaboration in papers. Abstracts can stand on their own merits. For instance, this spring I submitted these three abstracts. The first was presented at the New England section meeting. The other two will be presented at the April meeting in Columbus. The links to these works and all my other APS abstracts can be found below. Each of these two first abstracts represents a complete description of an idea. They might be abstracts, but they are now permanently in the scientific record. Remember, to make a contribution in science, one must first make his or her point. Then the idea has to become known. The process of making something known depends on two factors. First, it depends on the actions of the originator. In this case, at least submitting an abstract, placing a manuscript on an archival website, submitting a paper to a journal, or even taking a full page ad in the New York Times, or starting a YouTube channel. All these vehicles can work and are allowed. Their effectiveness, however, is governed not solely by the quality of the medium used, as some might assume. Rather, the second most important factor is the integrity of the scientific community itself. Science changes when a new idea is adopted. The originator outlines the idea, but the scientific community is responsible in large part for its advancement, and that demands an honest evaluation. I have several examples for you. It is widely known that Galileo freely acknowledged Castilli's contribution to the projection of sunspots. If not for Galileo, this would not be known. As a second example, Gay-Lussac credited Charles for formulating Charles' law, even though Charles never wrote a single word on his law and the experiments were done 15 years earlier. As a result, Charles' law is named after him because of Gay-Lussac's profound honesty. You can learn more about all this in the citations presented in this paper. As a final example, one of the most important important ideas in nuclear magnetic resonance was advanced by Jean-Louis Charles Genier in a talk presented at the Ampere conference held in the former Yugoslavia. He advanced the concept of two-dimensional NMR in that talk in 1971 and is still credited to this day for his insight. Again, the rule in science is that you say it and that people come to know that you did. There are many methods of communication which have been extended over time. It is unusual for me to give such a talk, but I thought that on the occasion of the April APS in Columbus, Ohio, it was worth mentioning. I will be attending the meeting with my friends, including Steve Crothers from Australia, Alan Roser from New Zealand, and Greg Gribben from Toronto. 
Steve will present these two abstracts, which are also linked below. Finally, should you attend any APS meeting in the future in which I am presenting, I will gladly join you for a cup of coffee. You only need to ask. So if you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.